Yes, we continue the Christmas affair. The Bible in the book of Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be called a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. He will reign on his father's David throne. So this season, even as we celebrate the season of Christmas, the season where we get to share with family and friends, let us not forget the reason for the season, and that is Jesus Christ, that he came in form of a child. He left his heaven in glory to just come and dwell amongst men so that we can be able to receive life. So I will pose a question to you tonight or this evening, or this morning. What is the reason for Christmas? Why do we celebrate Christmas? So sit down and reason. It is not only about the amazing food that we get to eat. It is not about the many friends and family. You know, this is a season where many people travel, get to travel from Nairobi to Shags. Eh, watu wanazunguka. Eh, sai machakos bus station imeja na watu ambao wakubuk ticket mapema so basically that is not only the reason for Christmas we have so many we have the main reason being Christ that's why we celebrate Christmas so even as we get to enjoy this amazing music remember that Jesus is the reason for the season and let's keep enjoying this amazing music let's celebrate with our family and friends and let's share the love of Christ even as we get to enjoy this Christmas season. I am your host, Isaac Burke. Let's continue with the amazing music. Thank you. Oh 
Christmas to everyone, wherever you are. We are so glad that God has given us an opportunity as his children to have his son with us. I'm here to share about Christmas affair. First of all, we want to understand Christmas and affair. Christmas comes from three, two words. The first word is Christ. And the second word is Mass. Christ means the anointed one. And mass means a group of people. When we talk about affair, we are simply talking about the issue. So when you put together these words, we are talking about the group of people celebrating the birth of the anointed one. Now here, we can simply trace it from the book of Isaiah, chapters number 9, and I'm reading verses number 1 that says, 
but those who have suffered will no longer be in pain. The territories of Zebulun and Naphtali in, Genta, in Galilee were once hated, but this land of the Gentiles across the Jordan River and along the Mediterranean Sea will be greatly respected. In verse 6 says, A child has been born for us. We have been given a son who will be our ruler. His name will be Wonderful Advisor, a mighty God, an eternal Father, and a Prince of Peace. His power will never end. Peace will last forever. He will rule David's kingdom and make it grow strong. He will always rule with honesty and justice. The Lord All-Powerful will make certain that all of this is done. Now, why this scripture? The Bible speaks to us and tells us about two tribes, which once were two children of a man called Jacob. This is Naphtali and Zebulun. When you trace back, Naphtali is a son that was born of a maid to Rachel. The, 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 the second wife to Jacob. And when you look at him, the Bible speaks to us and tells us in the book of Genesis, uh, chapters number 30, verses 8, about Naphtali as being a son that was born as a, as a result of the struggle and contest that Rachel was in with her sister. And Zebulun is this child who was who was given to lay as a sixth son to bring praise and uh, means giving. So why we, do we trace it back from there? Because when you read in, Gen, in, in, in Isaiah 9, it's telling us that Zebulun and Naphtali, they're tracing them because one of them is going to be a harbor around the, 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 the seashore and another one is going to be the praise. So this son is born to bring hope and a peace back to the people who were broken hearted, who had lost hope completely, whose lives were in misery. And remember the time when the son is born, they were under the Roman Empire. And this Roman Empire had frustrated them. They had lost hope. So the expectation is that when the Messiah is born, we are going to be set free from all these troubles. And when now, the Bible tells us that this is going to be a wonderful counselor. It's going to be the ruler. Government, government are going to be on his shoulders. The people are going to look up to him for every sustenance, for every help, for every peace that they ever need. That's why he's the peace of, prince of peace. He's the lord of lords. He's the king of kings. And above all things, they're telling us that he's going to restore the throne of David and make it strong. That means that his rulership is going to be forever. He's the internal father. He is the father of all creation. And that is coming to bring back his creation. John chapter 1, the Bible tells us in verse 10 that he came to his own, but it's not, not, his own did not receive him. But to them that received him were given the right to become sons of God. As we celebrate Christmas, we are getting back to our original concept of being the children of God because the Son is given to us as an inheritance to make us back, to reconcile us back to the Father that we are never left in, in Christ, we are never left in tears. Even when we go through struggles, God will make us whole again. That's why the whole world celebrates Christmas. The whole world celebrates His goodness because He is the Lord of Lords. I want to charge you today that as you celebrate Christmas, let God be in your heart and raise you to the next level. May God bless you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Your word has come into our lives. As you celebrate Christmas, help us to celebrate Jesus and put it in our hearts and raise to do what he wants us to be, that we may fully be Christians because we shall be Christ-like. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.
Oh.